What's up, ladies and gentlemen? So, today's video is all about training back. It is a back specialization session that you can add on top of your primary workouts once or twice a week to get a little bit more activity on your lats and upper back. Now, by now, you should have seen on your Live Up dashboard, or if you're watching this on YouTube with the limited access stuff, plenty of workouts that act as your foundation workouts if you don't have a gym. We have a Live Up gym-based plan, and we have a Live Up body weight-based plan, and we currently have the coronavirus survival kit at the time that this has been filmed. Now, the in-gym full plan is always going to be the most effective and the most progressive, so that should almost always be your priority. If, of course, you don't have access to a gym, you have limited equipment or body weight, then your primary focus should be on the complexes that are on the Live Up dashboard or YouTube. So you want to be doing three to four of them per week maximum, choosing the hardest ones for you. That could be barbell only, it could be kettlebell only, it could be band only, it could be dumbbell only, or it could be the progressive body weight Live Up plan. What I'm gonna show you today is in line with the arm specialization bolt-on that I gave you a few weeks ago and the glutes specialization bolt-on that I gave you a few weeks ago. Today we are gonna add a back bolt-on. So if you just want to get a little bit more activity, potentially a little bit more growth on your back and you do have access to a dumbbells or pull-up bar or limited equipment, this is gonna be useful for you. What we're gonna do, we're gonna go for four exercises. We're gonna do one big primary exercise, which is going to be a pull-up. We are then gonna do a horizontal row with a chest supported dumbbell row. Really, really good exercise. In fact, one of my favorite exercises for growth, posture, and metabolic output, which I really love. We're gonna superset that with a dumbbell pullover, which is really, really nice to stretch the lats back out. Then we're gonna finish off with an angled rear delt complex to try and get the shoulders rounded off properly on the posterior chain. So it's a really simple workout that you can add on maybe twice per week on top of your complexes, but ideally it needs to be at the end of the complex. So let's say you're doing five complexes, five rounds of each complex, three times a week or four times a week. On two of those days, as far apart as you can, add in this little bolt-on workout, okay? It's gonna take you an extra half an hour, but we should get through it, it should be fun, and you're gonna get a nice pump from it. So, before we get going, I want you all to go and do the proper warm-up, which is on the Live Up dashboard. Start your circuit, start your complexes, get through them, and when you're ready, we start this. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so let's get to it. Our first exercise, a big heavy one. We are looking for between three and five total sets of four to six reps of a pull-up, ideally weighted. Now, of course, I have a pull-up bar in here, which is great, I have that advantage. If you don't, find a tree, a rafter in your house, maybe you have a pull-up bar at home, and some of you may even have a limited amount of gym equipment at home that includes a pull-up bar, which is great. If you can't find a pull-up bar, you can also do a horizontal pull or something like a body row, where you lie under something about so high and you row your body towards it, but you're kind of lying on your back. You can do that under the edge of a dining table, something along those lines, if your dining table is structurally strong, ideally not made out of glass, and is not gonna rock and roll all over the place. If you can use a weight belt, awesome. If you can't, don't worry, you can hold a dumbbell between your feet. If you can't do either of them, that again is absolutely cool, it's not a problem. So, we're gonna aim for between three and five total sets. I'm gonna do three for the sake of the video. Of four to six reps, we don't want to train to failure. It's very, very important. We wanna go all the way down to the bottom, all the way up to the top. The only caveat to that, the only possible exchange, is if you have elbow issues, anything like that, you may want to stop just short of lockout, and I will show you how to do that because I will be doing exactly the same. So, first set, we're looking for between four and six reps of a pull-up. You can use whatever grip you like, supinated, semi-supinated, or pronated, even wide, it depends where you feel most comfortable. So, first set, we're gonna go pull-ups. I'm gonna go for a semi-supinated grip in there because it's most forgiving on my forearms. We start off at our full hang, like so, then we come up. One, control down. Two, three, four, five, six, and down, nice and steady. So, that's my set one. We are going to take approximately two minutes rest now. The time in your rest period, the first thing you wanna do is grab yourself some water so you can have a drink like so. Once you've done that, get into the habit of sipping between every single set. Is there anything you could have done better on that set? Did you go slack on some of the reps? 
Were you squeezing as hard as you could have? Did you nail your tempo? Is there anything you can do better? Assess every single set to make sure you're getting out of it what you want. We've got two minutes rest here. You've got about a minute and a half of that left, so we'll hydrate. Now it's important to remember that although some of the foundation workouts, the primary workouts, whether that be body weight, live up, or some of the limited equipment workouts, dumbbell, kettlebell, barbell, whatever, you are still accumulating a lot of volume and that's very, very difficult to recover from. So don't overdo these sessions. It's really important that you train for performance and you train to be strong. If you're training too much because you're conscious of, I need to burn as many calories as I can, you're probably not going to build much muscle. That in turn is gonna make it much harder for you to burn fat. You're also gonna make yourself much more susceptible to injury, which we don't want. You're also gonna elevate your stress hormones because you're not recovering well enough, which we don't want. That's gonna affect your hormones, that's gonna affect your sleep, it's gonna affect your general well-being. So take into account the accumulated volume of these sessions and don't abuse them. Do this session maximum once to twice per week alongside or on top of your complexes, your foundation sessions, but look out for signs of overtraining, any excessive fatigue, any drop in performance, things like that. Really, really important. Even cravings, but we'll talk about that in the next one. So this is our rest period. Weight up, let's get yourself loaded back up again before we go. Let me just move this mic because I feel like I might be affecting it. Hopefully you can still hear me, fingers crossed. Otherwise I'm gonna to have to start refilming. So back in, take our grip again where you're comfortable, full hang, then let's go. One, two, try not to swing, constant control. Three, four, five, one more, we don't want to fail. Six, nice and smooth. So that's set two, we're now gonna wait our two minutes to recover. Now, right before I started that last set, I mentioned even dietary cravings, issues with your willpower and your dietary compliance can be a sign of overtraining. When you train a lot, your body is using an awful lot of substrates and cofactors that are used for very, very many processes in your body. When you're training, these become depleted. When you are depleted, both in the short term, but especially in the long term, your body is gonna keep asking for you to put stuff in. Now, whether it thinks it needs food or not, it's gonna ask you for food. It's gonna ask you for loads of food. It's gonna beg you to eat tons and tons of essentially glycogen, which is gonna translate into the real world as carbohydrates. It's gonna ask you to eat too many calories. It's gonna ask you to eat too much fat. You're gonna to start to lose control of your portions because your appetite is out of control. All of these can be signs of overtraining, under-recovering, and poor hormonal health. So balance all of these things out, really, really important. If you haven't already, grab your water again, get into that habit of taking water between every single set, just a little sip. Now, of course, ideally, rather than water, you have something like Amplify, which is an intra-workout supplement with leucine, glycine, glutamine, and electrolytes. This is going to help you recover much faster. It gives you everything you need that you're losing through sweat. It's gonna allow you to continue to contract the muscles hard. It's gonna speed up your body's ability to recover after training and during training, which ultimately, over the long term, is going to allow you to train more often, much harder, therefore delivering greater results. So if you can, amplify in your water as well. One to two scoops in a one and a half liter bottle of water like that. And try to make sure if you're having a 45 minute to an hour workout, it's gone by the end. Cool, right, pick up your weight. We're gonna go in, this is gonna be a final set for me, but depending on how you recover, remember, this is three to five sets for this primary movement. So, racked up, everything should be good. And then back on. So, anywhere between four and six reps, but I don't want you to fail, this is really, really important. So we hang down, and we go, one. Constant control. Two, stop just short if it hurts your elbows. Three, four, five. Right, I'm gonna stop there because the next one will have been a bit too much of a struggle for me with my wrist as is, and I don't want to fail during these workouts. It's a very, very quick way to get injured 
overtrain and end up chasing fatigue rather than performance. So that was our A1 exercise, primary exercise. A pull up, three sets of four to six with as much weight as you can. If you can't do pull ups, you don't have access to something like a pull up bar, then do a body row or some similar physically difficult body weight movement that involves pulling. Okay, so hopefully you've recovered just enough from your pull-ups. Our next exercise is one of my firm favorites. It's the chest supported dumbbell row, I love this. Now you can play around with the angle of the bench. You can come further up, it's gonna hit your upper back slightly more. The lower down you go, the lower down your back and into your lats it's gonna go. I like to have something about this angle, anywhere between let's say 30 and 45 degrees is perfect for me, I really, really feel it. What we're trying to do on this one is row the dumbbells towards the hips, squeeze the shoulder blades back and push them down into our back pockets to get those lats working hard. We're gonna aim for around 10 to 12 reps on this and then we're gonna go for a dumbbell pullover immediately afterwards to stretch the lats back out after we've shortened them. So, easiest way to get onto the bench when you're doing this. Take your dumbbells, place your feet, on the stand of the bench if you have one. So, you know, you can keep it supported. It's not gonna slide out from underneath you. And then slowly lower yourself forwards onto it. Once we're in this position, we can then row up, squeeze, and down. Up, squeeze, down. See how I'm trying to pull those dumbbells towards my hips. Three, four, five. Try and keep your neck fairly straight. Six, by looking at the floor just in front of you. Seven, big, big squeeze on those lats. Eight, nine, stretch it out. 10, we're gonna go for two more. Feel the lats, every single rep. One more time, and down. And carefully put your dumbbells down. Ideally, if you've got some kind of matting to protect your flooring, that would be great. Now, we're gonna drop the bench down to a flat position, like so. And we're gonna go for a dumbbell pullover. So, we're gonna grab a seat on the edge of the bench, taking the dumbbell in hand like so. We want a diamond grip around the dumbbell. Something like that, wrapped around the dumbbell so we can hold it here. Then, we drop down into a position with our shoulders resting on the bench. We're nicely supported. Our eye gaze is straight up so we can see the ceiling. Then, with our arms outstretched, and a slight bend, just a slight bend. We're gonna let our arms drop behind us, stretch the lats, and squeeze back up. Stretch the lats, and squeeze back up. Stretch the lats, big stretch, squeeze. Keep our abs tight. Five, halfway nearly. Let's go 10 to 12 again. Six. Seven. Stretch it out, keep the abs tight so we're not swinging our hips around. Eight, nine, 10, last two. Stretch, squeeze, stretch, squeeze. Then safely bring the dumbbell onto your chest and roll it off to the side so you're not risking your face. Very, very important. So we're gonna place the dumbbell back down. Bring our bench up to where we wanted it, so it was one down for me. And then we're gonna take a rest. Now we're looking at about 90 seconds here for the rest, 90 seconds to a minute, but whatever you need. We know that during these rest periods, the first thing we want to try to do is take a sip of our water. Always remain hydrated. This is not just about, you know, general health. Everybody knows, yeah, I've got to stay hydrated. It's gonna increase the health of your muscles. You're not gonna pull them so regularly. It's gonna keep your mineral balance right. It's going to make your skin look better. It's gonna help you grow faster. It's gonna support your liver, which is gonna help you to burn fat faster. It's gonna give you better pumps. And we all love that feeling. So really focus on taking care of your hydration all of the time. This is very, very, very important. Something that too many people neglect. It's very simple, just a sip between every single set. Now, it's important, especially on the dumbbell pullover, the second exercise there, that you make sure you are keeping your body as flat as possible. Don't allow your hips to lift up. Don't allow your back to arch because as your lat stretches, it's going to try to get your back to arch. Keep your abs as tight as hell. Keep everything locked in. 
and then we're going to keep that movement nice and safe. So start prepping your dumbbells. We're about to go in for the second set. Again, we're doing three sets of this. By the time you've done your pull-ups and you have done your rows and the superset and what we're going to finish with, it's more than enough workout to add on to your complexes, especially some of the bigger complexes that are doing lots of pulling movements. So take our dumbbells, one and two. We stand up over the bench safely. Wedge our feet in so it doesn't slide. Lower ourselves in, under control. From that position, big stretch of the shoulders, pushing the shoulder blades apart, and then we retract them and we pull back. Squeeze, just a little lift of the chest as we come up. Two, stretch, squeeze. Three, I really like to pause at the top. Four, to get my lats and shoulders working. Five, stretch, flex. Six, stretch, flex. Seven, stretch, flex. Eight, nine, control every rep. 10, we're using the muscles to move the dumbbells. We're not swinging things backwards and forwards. Last one, boom, there we go. So, same thing again. We flatten that bench and everything we do is keeping control of that dumbbell. Don't leave anything to chance where we may screw things up. What I'm gonna do on this one, I'm gonna flip myself around so you see this from a different angle and you can figure out what I'm doing from here. So, I take my diamond grip, dumbbell goes between my hands. I set on myself down and then I lower down behind me, stretching the lats, squeezing back up. Stretching the lats, big stretch, squeeze back up. But notice how my body isn't moving, my back isn't arching too far off the bench. I'm keeping everything completely under control at all times. I hope you can still hear me and the mic isn't touching my chin too much. Wah. Stretch it right out, open the lats up. Squeeze back, driving the shoulder blades down. Stretch, squeeze back, driving the shoulder blades down. We're gonna go for four more. Stretch out, I'll be wearing a crop top by the end of this. Three, stretch, two left. Big stretch, open it up, feel the shoulders open up. Stretch, one more time, stretch, 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 and squeeze. Again, safely down. On this occasion, because I have nothing beside me, I'm gonna sit up and place it near my lap. Really, really simple. So, that's two sets down. We're gonna take a rest now, about 90 seconds, and then we're gonna go in for our final set. Although, on a lot of these. I'm sure you can feel like you can do more. But for the most part, especially right now, during the COVID-19 outbreak, which is when these videos are all filmed, is you're better off training with a lower volume per session more often for many reasons. You know, maybe you're not gonna have tons and tons of weight to use, but you're also gonna be wanting to train more regularly because you're bored. Maybe you're trapped at home, maybe you're in lockdown. You want to train slightly more regularly and by reducing session volume, you're going to be able to do that with a far lower risk of injury. That being said, it's also worth noting that with the dumbbell pullover, the second exercise of this superset, you do have to have a relative level of shoulder integrity, mobility and strength. If it causes you any pain, do not do it. A nice alternative, if it does cause you pain, to still get the lats burnt out a little bit, is take some dumbbells or plates, or even just your body weight if you can, Learn to pull back and squeeze like crazy. Stretch out, pull back with straight arms and squeeze your lats like crazy. That's a nice alternative to get your lats working, especially to get that mind-muscle connection and build up the lactic acid for a really, really good pump during this workout. Remember, we're not trying to smash ourselves with these workouts. We're stimulating, we're specializing a little bit on these movements in order to get more out of our weeks. And I'll explain in the next rest period why we need to make sure we're not trying to do everything at once. Right, next set. So, pick up your dumbbells, nice and safely. Standing with them at your side. Wedge your feet so the bench is safe. Lean forwards into our position. Draw the shoulder blades apart, pushing them towards the floor. And then we retract and we pull up hard. Pull in towards the hips, squeeze like crazy. One, up, squeeze, two, Stretch, up, squeeze, three, stretch, up, squeeze, four, stretch, up, squeeze, five. If you can hear me, do it with me. Squeeze, five, six, stretch, up, seven, stretch, bring them up, squeeze, eight, stretch, 
bring them up, squeeze, nine, three more, stretch, squeeze, last two, almost there, squeeze, stretch, open them up, squeeze, and there we go, beautiful, dumbbells down, flatten your bench, or move to wherever you're doing your pullover, and then we go again, so dumbbell up safely onto your lap, you're going to take your grip, diamond grip, slide myself down, lean back onto the bench, and into position, once I've got my movement, then I can take it over my face, and start the set, so we go big stretch down, big big stretch, big big stretch, and squeeze, and again, stretch, 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 and squeeze, I'm keeping my whole body strong and solid, three, stretch, 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 four, stretch, 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 five, stretch, 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 six, seven, stretch, 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 eight, stretch, nine, stretch, almost there, 10, last two, big stretch, and we're gonna hold it in the stretch for five seconds on the last rep. Down, five, four, three, two, one, squeeze, awesome. Down onto your chest, roll onto the bench, so everything is safe. When it's there, you stand up. Now, we're gonna rest for about two minutes, and then we go on to our final exercise. We're still gonna be using the bench, or similar, just a different set of dumbbells. Cool? Right, all I was gonna say, in the previous rest period, I mentioned I would tell you how to use these properly. Choose one specialization to do. Don't try to add arms at the end of one complex, then back at the end of the other complex, then chest at the end of the other complex, then glutes at the end of the other. Pick your four complexes and tag on these bolt-ons to only two of them a week. It's really, really important you do this so you don't drag yourself into a state of overtraining be very very bad for you so use them properly don't abuse them take a rest grab some water and then we'll go on to your next sets okay guys and girls welcome back so next set is going to be a mechanical drop set targeting the posterior portion of the shoulders rear delts and somewhat lateral delts what you're going to need is a relatively light set of dumbbells and your bench again this is always going to be a relatively light movement, as with anything when you're doing lat raise style movements. You don't need to overload the muscle too much. You need to stimulate it. If you're having to throw dumbbells around like this, it's probably too heavy and you're not gonna get a huge amount out of it. Save the really heavy stuff for your compound lifts where it's really gonna deliver proper results. What we're gonna do, we're gonna start with the weakest movement first. So the reason this is a mechanical drop set is that as we run out of basically strength, based on the mechanics of the movement, so the angles of the joints, etc., as we run out of strength, we're gonna put ourselves in a mechanically more advantageous position. So what do I mean by that? We're gonna do a rear delt fly, basically, where we are lying flat out on this bench. We're gonna start off aiming for one to two reps short of failure, leaning forwards and flying the dumbbells out like so, going for a bit of a pump. Now, when we can no longer get fairly good quality reps. We're gonna step the bench up a little bit. When we can burn out on the next step, we step it up a third time. That's our full set done, okay? So, I want you to set your bench at probably somewhere around 15 to 30 degrees, anywhere that's the lowest setting that you can still move your arms without the dumbbells hitting the floor. Once you're there, lean forwards onto that bench. So you can see here, I'm about at my limit. The dumbbells are real close to the floor but not quite hitting it. Now, from here, I'm gonna aim for a couple of reps short of failure. For the sake of the video, because I don't know where you're gonna fail or what weight you have, we'll go for around 12 to 15. So, in this position, we go up and we squeeze. We go up and we squeeze. You can see my palms are facing down. Now, you can alter this slightly. You can turn your palms to go backwards if you feel it more. It's entirely up to you how you go. There's six, seven, Push the dumbbells towards the side of the room. Nine, 10, 11, one more time. Big squeeze out. Okay, so the dumbbells come down. Now, as you saw, I burnt out there and my body was not quite lifting the dumbbells up to a proper line. So I've come up about 30 degrees now. 
I'm gonna keep my palms facing backwards and I'm gonna go again. Now, technically, I'm in a slightly stronger position here. I've created a mechanical advantage, there's four. So we come up, squeeze five, up, squeeze six, up, squeeze seven, eight, nine. Now you may get 10, 12, 20, or even six reps on this. But remember, it's a drop set, so you just get yourself close to failure. So I've hit my limit there. I'm now gonna step up about another 30 degrees. As you can see here now, my body is only on a mild angle, and I'm gonna go and do the same again. Burn myself out, one, two, three. Hand position is still the same, palms facing down and backwards. Six, seven, up and squeeze. Flex, push towards the side of the room. Ah, oof, burns. Three more we're going for. One, two, ah, wow. Ow, 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 that burnt a lot. So, as you can see, I'm keeping a slight bend in my elbows. We're gonna take a bit of a break here, about 90 seconds. We're gonna take a slight bend in the elbow. We're facing the palms backwards and down slightly, and we're trying to force the dumbbells, not up. We're trying to push them to the side of the room. That is our intention. We drive the dumbbells to the side of the room. That's gonna fire up the shoulder properly. And then every time we fatigue, we change the angle of the bench giving ourselves a slightly better mechanical advantage and allowing us to work with the progression of fatigue that our body's experiencing. Cool? Cool. So, back down to the bottom. Remember, your water habit, between every single set, you're taking some water. Just a little sip. Now you'll find the shoulders can tolerate quite a lot of volume, but it is important that you learn how to feel them. You don't overtrain them, because remember, anytime you push, bench press, shoulder press, push-ups, overhead kettlebell press, all of the things that we're doing inside the complexes, or you will do in your average gym workout. So a lot of pushing involved. And it's gonna hammer the crap out of your anterior delt, this front section of the deltoid. So you probably don't need to do an awful lot of work on that front section of the deltoid. What you're better off doing is lateral work and rear delt work like this. Cool, enough of me gibbering. We're gonna go in for the second set. So this is number two of three. Depending on how you recover, you can only do two, but I would say two to three is a good ballpark figure to work for this. So we lean forwards. We take our position, palms facing backwards, and then we push to the side of the room, contracting our deltoids, the muscle at the back of our shoulder. Go. One, straight to the side of the room. Two, three, bend your elbows ever so slightly. Four, five, ah, six, Seven, burns already. Eight, nine, ten. Ow. Come on, come on, come on. Up we go, there we go. I hear all sorts of crazy noises coming out of me now. So, we're gonna come up two clicks on the bench, and that for most people is about 15, oh sorry, 30 degrees. Your average gym bench goes up in increments of 15 degrees. So in our position, straight back out, we go to failure. Slight bend in the elbow, Keep our posture, four, five, six, seven. Ooh, it burns, eight, come on, nine. I'm gonna go for one more while they're quality. Ah. Now, I probably could have swung out a couple more, but it's not about shitty form. It's about good form, it's about connecting with that muscle. On our final set, maybe we'll do a couple of cheat reps just to burn it out that much. Now, last one, almost upright, and we go. Now, you will feel as you go through this, you do get slightly stronger because you start to recruit the lateral delt as well as the rear delt. Seven, we're gonna go five more. Eight, nine, nearly there. 10, last two. Oh, oh, burns. Okay, so another 90 seconds. We are waiting, bench back down, in prep for the third and final set. So, when we get to the third and final set, we are gonna try to fail. So we're gonna do a couple, maybe max two or three, cheat reps with every single incline. So I'm gonna do it at the bottom, swing a few out if I can. Not if you feel any pain in your shoulder or anything like that, if there's any likely damage, don't do it. Then I'm gonna do the same at our middle section, and then I'm gonna do a complete burnout at the top. 
If you have a training partner while you're doing this, you can also, and you have good shoulder integrity, you can also have them do an isometric hold afterwards. So when you've burnt out your shoulders, you stand with your elbows out to the side like this, squeezing those delts, because they should be pumped like crazy by that time, and you have your partner gently push down on them. Okay, gently push down on them. Imagine like maybe five to 10 kilos of force, just enough to start burning them out. If you can do that, you're gonna get a crazy burn. It's really gonna help to stress your deltoids in a safe way to allow them to grow and for you to get those big boulders. Cool? Right, grab yourself a last sip of water if you need to. And we're gonna go in for this last set. And then your workout is done. So dumbbells up. And don't worry if you can't find dumbbells light enough for this because it is, it's a difficult movement. Quite often with clients, we will use just weight plates, 1.25 1, 1 or 2.5 kilo weight plates. So don't be afraid of using that to get the quality reps out. So we're here. Now, with our palms facing backwards, we get our position, get comfortable, good grip on a dumbbell, slight bend in the elbow, and then we squeeze, pushing out towards the side of the room with a slight bend. Just focus on driving your little finger on each hand towards the side of the room you're in. For me, it always starts to burn around eight. Nine, come on, they're getting hard now. Ah, 10. Ah, I'm gonna go for five more. One, a little bit of a swing. Two, ow. Three, four, ow. Ah, that burns like crazy. So, we've done that. We're gonna come up about 30 degrees on our bench, take a breath, drop ourselves back in, and we go again, palms facing backwards, push your little fingers to the side of the room. Oh, I can feel this set's getting me. Three, four, squeeze the back of that shoulder. Five, six, seven, ow, eight. Come on, I'm gonna go for three more. One, ow, two, squeeze, come on. Ow, oh, yeah, burns a lot, a lot. Up, another 30 degrees, take our breath. Now palms face down, and let's get those lats, oh sorry, those delts burnt out. Nicely, constant tension. I'm pushing the dumbbells to the side of the room. I'm not trying to push them up to the ceiling. I'm pushing them out to the side. Ah, oh wow, I burned so bad. Burned so bad. If you're doing this with me, I hope you can feel my pain. Ah, one, Ooh. Ah. Ah. Ooh. Oh, that makes me want to cry. Oh, that's savage. Okay, so. Hopefully, if you've done that along with me, with the same timing, you're feeling something similar to me. You should have big pump delts right now. Your heart rate should be going. You'll be sweating, but you should have felt really good throughout that workout. It's a great variation of exercises. It's not too much volume, and it's very, very important. I know I keep saying it, that you don't slip into the temptation of training too often or too much. Keep the sets to the set parameters that I have suggested. Keep your complexes to five to 10 sets. Maximum five if you're doing one of these at the end, 10 if you're not, if it's in isolation. And you do not do a bolt-on, these specialization bolt-ons, more than twice a week. And ideally, space them three to four days apart as a minimum. If you do that, you're gonna get great results and you're not going to get injured or affect your recovery or make your whole life more difficult because of cravings, stress hormones, and other disruptions that a lack of proper recovery creates. Enjoy it, have fun, stay safe, and stretch off now if you can. Go eat a nice big meal.